<coughs> Hi everyone, I'm James. I'm a sustainability project manager at Camden, um, based here, community, Green Square. <laughs> and the Green, green Square. Um, so, I wasn't really going to talk about this, but I guess it's an obvious point. So, local authorities and carbon offset is typically associated with new planning applications. So, any new planning application um, which doesn't meet um, planning targets, so a certain reduction of building regs, they basically have to pay an offset for all the carbon which they couldn't meet to hit the target. So for many years it's been 35% for their building regs, but it's about to be 100% for all types of buildings. So that seemed like a big thing for a building. I would, I used to be an engineer, I know that it's pretty difficult to get completely zero carbon buildings in London, so there is an assumption that all new developments will be paying money. So. There's not really a question about whether there will be CO2 offset money for boroughs. There will be, it just depends on the rate of construction. London's had loads of construction, there's still lots more to be done. So for local authorities, it's, it's effectively an income source, but I think how we spend it is what I think is most interesting and probably is the biggest part of this conversation. So um, the thing that I think is really important for offsetting is that it needs to be as local as possible. It's very easy to fund a project on the other side of the world, which is cheap as chips for carbon. But in my mind, we're kind of uh, taking low-hanging fruit from other nations which may have less progressed carbon reduction programs, and we're kind of stealing those easy opportunities. Those easy opportunities did exist in the UK 20 years ago, but thankfully we've invested in them, and now we're on the hard yards. So I think that's where we should be focusing. And where local projects can happen within Camden, that's what, sort of, that's what I'm after. So the way it works in Canada at the moment is um, we have uh, CO2 offset money and quite a big chunk of that goes into the Canada Climate Fund, which is effectively a local subsidy scheme for residents. So if a resident wants to insulate their home, put some solar panels on their roof, they can apply to us for a grant, which we then provide. Um, is that the best sort of cost per tonne way to spend that money? Question mark. Is it filling a really bad gap in disappearance of subsidies? Yes, I think that's probably why we use it in that way. Um, but thinking about how it could be used more is a really interesting point that we get asked lots. So for reference with those numbers on the previous slide, the um, carbon offset rate is soon to go up to 95 pounds a tonne. So it's really at that top end of what um, Stephen was talking about for existing schemes. But I don't talk for all developers, but I don't really think it affects viability of projects. I think there's a big, it's not really a massive cost if you're building a 100 million pound development in central London. It's pretty small for it. So that's kind of an interesting point, which I'm hopefully people will tease out now, is how much do you value the carbon? If I go on a flight and then pay 50 quid to offset it, that feels like cheating and that's perhaps the moral, but if I paid 500 pounds, I'd probably feel better about it. Could I afford it? Question mark. Should it be inherent in the price on the, as a base point? Maybe, but perhaps that's a carbon tax. Um, just a point on that there's quite a lot of expectation, I think, about local authorities. We've got all these massive funds, we're just going to retrofit everything and hit zero carbon in 2030. The, the point that I find challenging is it, it takes quite a lot of money to spend money. Um, we don't, unfortunately, have amazing projects we can just, I can't just press an order for. X thousand tons on his hundred grand to spend it. It's quite it's quite difficult, and I think what Stephen pointed out really well is that electricity projects, solar on roofs, I'd say they're probably some of the easiest ones. They're a really unattractive cost per ton of carbon nowadays because the grid is improved. The best projects that we look at for cost per ton is heat retrofit, electrification of heat, moving things on district heating, and getting away from gas boilers. Those are the big projects, but trying to find a twenty grand two month project for is very difficult. We're talking more about 500 grand a year, incredible disruption to residents, and trying to get those projects over the line requires a lot of resource, effort, time, and trying to piece those things together is quite interesting. The last thing I say is we had a citizens assembly about climate change over the summer, and one of the recommendations from our assembly was that developers should improve buildings local to where they're constructing. And for me, this is where I really want to work on offset, is that instead of it going into a pool and perhaps myself and other officers having the challenge of how to spend it, can we sort of hyper-localise that spending? So 
they may be building a project on a plot here, but adjacent we've identified there's 10 residents who want to retrofit their homes, and we can sort of link those two together. And as well as the finance, perhaps link some expertise, there might be loads of great contractors on site, try and tie up, and I think that's the best way we deliver things in Canada. Thanks very much.